The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. You belong on the water. Adventure begins at the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the Shoretown Ballpark in Lakewood, home of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. For tickets and more, visit JerseyBoatExpo.com. It's Thursday, August 10th, 2023. I'm Jim Hutchinson, and this is your weekly video fishing forecast for the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region, exclusively at the Fisherman Magazine. Doormat fluke on the structure, Spanish mackerel and kingfish in the surf. Sheep's head out back, we've got mahi and wahoo inside of 20 miles from the coast. And we'll take a quick look at the weekend offshore weather forecasts and any opportunities to get out there for tuna. That update coming to us from NOAA Weather. But first, we've got some breaking news this week. We'll spend the next couple of minutes speaking about from NOAA Fisheries that should cause some major waves in the recreational fishing community in the days, weeks, and months ahead. And I dare say I'm expecting at least a congressional hearing or two in the future. So this past Monday afternoon, I sat in on a NOAA Fisheries conference call with uh, recreational fishing stakeholders uh, in which the federal agency, NOAA, acknowledged that their new fishing effort survey, or FES, used to estimate recreational saltwater participation along the Atlantic coast is likely overestimating effort by as much as 30 to 40 percent. So apparently back in May, NOAA finished this, uh, the first round of this um, uh, pilot study that they started analyzing and it was revolved around analyzing the Marine Recreational Information Program or MRIP and found that uh, a certain order of questions contained in that FES uh, in the surveys that were sent out to people to, to compile it found quote reporting errors and illogical responses so Dr. Evan Howell, director of NOAA's Office of Science and Technology, he led Monday's call and he said this pilot study from uh, NOAA found that their new effort estimates were quote, 30 to 40% lower for shore and private boat modes than produced for the current FES design, which of course is used in that 2022 and 2021 uh, MRIP data. If you remember way back in time, the original data collection method was called MRFS. That was the Marine Recreational Fishing Statistical Survey. That was found by the National Academy of Sciences, the highest peer-reviewed science group in the land, to be fatally flawed. That was their quote. That prompted Congress in 2006 and 2007 to come up with a mandate requiring NOAA to fix it. And that's in part why we have the Saltwater Angler Registry, so they have all of our contact information to mail us these wonderful FES surveys. The new MRIP program was launched about eight years ago, featuring this new fishing effort survey, which lo and behold, NOAA Fisheries is quickly realizing may be as flawed as their original, with a potential bias causing up to 40% over reporting, 40% more in the data than what is actually happening. So during this 30 minute briefing on Monday, I did get a couple of, uh, 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 a couple of questions in, uh, one pertaining to last week's vote by the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission to continue the emergency uh, regulations on striped bass. As you remember in May, ASMFC circumvented the process, right? They didn't go through any process. They said based on the FES from 2022, there's so many people fishing for striped bass that we have to act right now. So that over-reporting information was coming from FES and the MRIP program in 2022. Or as Sixers fans know very well, trust the process. My questions. How long has this pilot study been going on? Uh, and the reason I ask is that last week, of course, the ASMFC voted to continue that emergency action on striped bass, very much dependent on the 2022 MRIP, MRIP numbers, which you've just acknowledged as seeing a 30 to 40 percent differential in the pilot study in that number. If no one knew about this, should this have not my question is, should this have not come up in the ASMFC meeting last week when NOAA Fisheries voted in favor of the emergency action? 
I'll answer that one. Thank you for the question there. I mean, there's, I understand the concern on timing, and I, there really is, unfortunately, no good timing for anything. We have two council meetings coming up this week and next week. Um, we have this information in hand. We're not acting on this information right now because that is part of the process. We have the results. Um, we want to, you know, complete the testing for the results and make sure that if we were to make a change in the whole system, that we're doing this based on the best scientific rationale possible. Right now, we have an indication that we need to continue this testing to make this happen. We now have conversations about if we want to do something in the interim because this is a testing period that would go through 2024. Are there actions that we want to take? We have this in hand now. Um, it is probably going to be a part of discussions. I don't see it going into action anytime soon. We still have to use the information that we have. In other words, that's the best science available. So yeah, like I said, ASMFC circumvents the process by ignoring long-standing tradition of trust but verify, using harvest numbers to ratchet down the upper end of the slot limit uh, without any due process, right? And they did it based on the FES survey, the, 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 the over-reporting data. And when questions arise in the scientific community about the validity of that data being used, now suddenly there's a process that we all must be following. Process. Trust the process. This week, the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council also met to set specifications for the 2024 fishing seasons. And as Mr. Howell noted, None of these findings, lovey, on data collection are being used yet to write the sinking ship. I'm not a real good Jim Backus <laughs> impersonator. Anyway, a cursory glance uh, at the data this week's, uh, week's Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council. It shows that we could get a little bit of a bump in porgy quota for next year. Black sea bass may or may not change. It looks like we're going to get a little cut. While fluke or summer flounder... If you look at the screen, simply nonsensical. I mean, without any ability to argue about the data, council voted to move new specifications ahead, showing the potential for a 40% cutback in our recreational fluke quota in 2024 from 10.62 million pounds this year to 6.32 million pounds next year. You see, see that there? Up to 40% over harvesting in the flawed MRFs data and a 40% cutback in our fluke quota. <laughs> So, does that mean a season size and bag limit on fluke will get whacked again next year? Maybe. But there's something uh, called the uh, Recreational Reform Initiative uh, that is, has wound its way through the council process and that may be able to help us a little bit. Um, hopefully it provides a little bit of management flexibility around this questionable da da data and gives us some kind of hope for 2024. If you would like to read more, about the Recreational Reform Initiative. Look for my November 2021 article in the Fisherman Magazine and over at thefisherman.com. You can search for Initiative for Change, a new call for angler management. Not anger management, although it's getting close. More recently, I wrote an editor's log, that was back in June, called Personally Injured Lawyer that explains how environmentalists and some of their attorneys are opposed to any efforts to offer a little bit of flexibility considering this flimsy data. One personally aggrieved attorney from Long Island is quoted there as being denied, quote, significant enjoyment for fishing for these stocks, like fluke and sea bass, because of efforts to provide a little relief for anglers getting jammed up by reporting errors and illogical responses. Information like this, it's a comprehensive, but you'll only find it in the Fisherman magazine. Um, upcoming meetings, special events, all the regulatory things, how they're making our fish sausages, how they get stuffed, you'll find about it in the Fisherman Magazine. But there's plenty of reading, how to, where to, all the reports, product reviews, all the news, it's all in there in the Fisherman Magazine. Pick that August edition up at your favorite tackle shop right now. Oh, and when you do, talked about this for the last couple of weeks, be sure to turn to page 28 a young man named Pedro Ildefonso shares a lifetime of what he's learned, 11 years old, on the piers, bulkheads, and jetties in terms of dropping jigs down along the rocks for tog, and yes, sheep's head too. This young tsunami tackle ambassador sent this shot over to me to prove that in, in addition to that one tog limit right now that you can fill pretty quickly in your bag once you're up at the jetty rocks, but you might also find a sheep's head or two as well. My man, Pedro. Thanks again. 
You can get those sheep's head by boat, of course, work in the old pilings and rubble out back. But with corkers on your soles and the right gear in your tackle pouch, you can make really quick work of things out along the inlet rocks. For more on that, let's join Jenny Ackerman, open boat, as she stops by fish heads to stock up for the local action. Welcome to this week's open boat. Today, I'm with Frezza at Fisherman's Headquarters, and he's gonna be going over some lures to use fishing off the jetties in the summertime right now. Yeah, so right now we got a lot of blackfish, sea bass, uh, porgies, triggerfish, sheep's head. Um, so I like to use either single hook tog rig or jig. If you're fishing towards the tip, you're probably gonna wanna use a rig, two or three ounce. The current gets pretty heavy. But if you're fishing back towards the lighthouse or the finger jetties, I like, to, I like to use the jig, you can drop in between the rocks. Also, we got a lot of bluefish, so smaller jigs. Bluefish are about, I'd say eight to 16, 14 inches. So you're gonna want the smaller jigs. Also, I got a couple top waters, a couple resident bass around still. So, Yozuri, Top Knock, and then the Hopkins, Classic, Cast Masters, Snapper Zappers, they all work. So I'm going after this to target some blackfish. What would you recommend bait-wise for me to be using in the summer? Right now I'd probably be using sand fleas. There's a lot of sand fleas in the wash um, and in the inlet. So plus we're stocked up on them. I need to get some of those before I go. Guys, if you're coming down this way to fish the lighthouse, come in, see Frezza and the boys at Fisherman Headquarters. Stop and say hi and get stocked up because they are just loaded with stuff. Stepping down off the rocks and along those open beaches at the Jersey Shore, this second half of summer is, of course, prime time for fluke. As many of those flatties move out of the warmer bay waters, closer to the inlets, and a lot of times migrate out along the beach, where there's plenty of bait at this point. You'll see it. Uh, little rain baits, peanut bunker. In fact, it was peanut bunker uh, that David Shariki used over the weekend to, sh to snare this 25-inch fluke uh, at Long Branch. Steve Leslie had a couple of nice flounder along with eight shorts. It was pretty close to Hereford Inlet, right by Dad's Place Marina. He checked in with the folks at New Jersey Bait and Tackle in North Wildwood. That photo, courtesy of Michael Seslagowski. That should be botched name number two of this week. My apologies. And my congratulations to the bride and groom. A bachelor party this week aboard the Gambler out of point resulted in a 10 and a half pound doormat fluke during a bachelor party trip using a rented boat rod and reel with bait, but no entry into the daily pool. Is that supposed to say striper? I can't tell. Hey, listen, if you're paying to get on a headboat, you got to be in the pool. Right? It's like joining a big, tour, uh, big tournament and not entering the Calcutta. Uh, if you're going to be in it, be in it to win it. It's like your subscription to the Fisherman Magazine, of course. You're qualifying already just by being a subscriber for that Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. And sea bass right now, I know we've only got a one sea bass bag limit in New Jersey this month, but still, if you're going to be catching one of those jumbos and taking a jumbo home, bring it over to local tackle shop because sea bass is wide open on our Dream Boat leaderboard. Let's check in with Tim Smith to see what kind of updates we have this week in our Dreamboat leaderboard. This week, Tom Kelly of West Islip weighed in a 2.75 pound sea robin that pushed second place Eddie Terrabiel down by one point and out of the sea robin category. Eddie does remain in second place for total points. No other changes to the leaderboard, but we did see a nice 2.5 pound scup entered by George Miranda of Hamburg, New Jersey, which places him in fifth place in the Porgy division. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Saiga Craft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. So if you are on those Jersey Shore and Delaware beaches this week, sand crabs, mole crabs could get you a striper in the dawn hours or try smaller plastics. Uh, also around low light conditions in the mornings, hard swimmers, 
Perhaps those NLBN soft shads on jig heads, perhaps. Fish bites, bag of worms on a high-low rig could produce a few kingfish, possibly a pompano, especially in the southern half of the, uh, of the Garden State down into Delaware as well. And of course, carry those epoxy jigs and those slim metals for a shot at Spanish mackerel in close and hopefully maybe a bonito or two as well. Now just outside the sheer volume of squid in some mid-range and even inshore areas is leading to the sale of a lot of squid jigs in local tackle shops. Greg Bartle got this one on a mid-range trip aboard the High Flyer out of Waretown. Live squid are like tuna candy, fluke candy as well, and being fresh, you can also bring back your bait and have it for dinner. I guess just don't tell the family that was your bait. We are getting the occasional uh, reports though of tuna and other pelagics on some of the mid-range lumps, bumps, and ridges. Seaside, for example, has produced some hit or miss chances at bigger fish uh, like bluefin tuna. Although Randy Halat emailed this week about a 69-inch Wahoo caught on a high-speed troll apparently just 15 miles east of Barnegat Inlet. So yeah, it's time to hit those lobster pots and, and, and high flyers along some of those inshore or offshore reefs. We are getting reports of chicken mahi uh, at this point, and the deeper you go, the farther out you travel, bigger fish are there as well. Just look for some of that floating debris, but we are in prime time this month if you wanna get inshore mid-range looking for some of those mahi. Now, the crew of the Jersey Nuts uh, out of Point and also Atlantic City, they've been getting into the action pretty hot and heavy. They're 57, had a mess of tuna and mahi spread out on the dock over the weekend. An early glimpse at the offshore weather forecast from NOAA shows a Thursday cold front becomes stationary across central waters Friday and Friday night with a possible coastal low developing. The front is expected to weaken Saturday, so the Hudson to Baltimore conditions, they do appear to improve for Saturday and Sunday. Catch them up if you're planning on taking advantage of one of those windows and getting out there for some of those tuna, mahi, wahoo, they're gunning for another state record king mackerel as well. We've been dancing in between some pretty significant storms of late, especially that garbage that blew through on Monday. But hopefully this weekend pans out um, uh, throughout our New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania region. With that, let's head west to Dunkelburgers in Stroudsburg, PA, which is where my man George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy, brings us our weekly freshwater update. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, us anglers had to deal with some crazy weather this summer, but despite all this crazy weather, I think there hasn't been too bad fishing. You know, things seem to produce week after week, and it's really good, too, because there's a lot of good fishing coming up and hate to have it ruined by, like, really high, fast water, but we're working our way through it. You know, the fish doesn't, haven't seemed to mind too much. You know, the largemouth bass fishing has been stellar. In fact, in fact a few people checked in. Nick Canestra fishing lower Susquehanna, upper Chesapeake. Well, he's been getting some great bass fishing this time of year. Also up in my area of the woods up near Albrightsville, uh, you know, Scott Court checked in with some of these uh, local lakes, uh, smaller ponds and lakes, getting in some largemouth bass there as well. So they don't seem to mind the weather too much. Now, if you go out towards the Susquehanna out by the Harrisburg area, good friend Shane Fry checked in. He's just crushing smallmouth in that area. And Susquehanna is known for good smallmouth fishing, but uh, these have just been a real consistent bite out there, so good to get on them. Uh, from New Jersey, you know, Mo Quebec checked in. He said, George, we got some pretty good catfishing out here in New Jersey as well, and look at that pictures, they sure do. Him and his boy were out there throwing some uh, bunker chunks. Great way to use up some leftover bait and getting us some great catfish out there in New Jersey. Now, guys, I wanted to uh, share with you uh, a little post that the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission uh, sent out some information on trout fishing. You know, we've been talking about fish mortality all summer with these high temperatures, uh, but they're telling us that 65 degrees and below is the only time you want to get out there and really fish for these trout. I know we got some great rainbow trout, some awesome brown trout here in Pennsylvania, uh, but you know, if you want to have that fish that, and release that fish successfully, uh, it's got to be water temperatures below 65 degrees. Any more than that, a safe release is going to be real questionable. And even if you want to 
save a few for the pan and you're out fishing, you catch a short, well that short is not going to be released very healthy if you get into that warmer water. So guys, just be aware, be sure to check those water temperatures before you get out on those sensitive fish like those trout. But guys, get out this weekend. I think we're in for a stretch of good weather. Hopefully things dry a little bit. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Our 23rd issue of the 2023 season is out this week, the digital edition. That's for paid subscribers to The Fisherman Magazine. If you go sniffing around thefisherman.com and looking at all kinds of stories and you're not logged in as a subscriber, you're only gonna get to see a bunch of pages before this window comes shut. But I'll tell you what, I love this pick. Mother and daughter, nice harvest from the shores of Staten Island. That's our weekly dish, uh, a di digital edition. Of course, inside that edition, you will find our weekly calendar of events which you'll fi also find in full, the full August edition calendar events um, in the August edition that you can still pick up at newsstands. But uh, at events coming up this weekend into next week that I thought you might be interested in, you've got both the Shillelagh out of Belmar and the JCSA Fluke and Fiesta in Bricktown on Saturday. Also, the Association of Surf Angling Clubs, they have a youth event in Harvey Cedars, that's on Saturday. Offshore anglers who are looking at a potential improved week of offshore condi conditions. You have multi-day tournaments next week on our calendar. You've got the Ocean City Marlin and Tuna Clubs offshore open. That kicks off on Sunday. While the Beach Haven Marlin and Tuna Club has their White Marlin Invitational next Wednesday through Saturday. You don't need an invitation. Just go over there to their website and go, uh, the captain's meeting is incredible. You'll have a great time. Again, find more in the August edition of the Fisherman Magazine in newsstands and tackle shops and marinas right now. Finally, this week, I would tell you I'm a big Trader Joe's fan. You may even catch me in there from time to time, picking up my favorite pimento cheese, the spicy street corn chips, or fattening brookies. Well, as service to my fellow Trader Joe's shoppers, a recall notice on Trader Joe's brand windmill cookies. They look tasty, but bite down hard, you could find some rocks inside. No lie, they're recalling the windmill cookies because they might be loaded with rocks. In my humble opinion, based on professional and personal experience, if it has to do with a windmill or a wind turbine, you're biting off way more than you really want to chew here when you're grabbing something like that. You know, Noah says industrial wind won't create any problems. Says there's no science to show anything about the whales or, or that it's going to impact our fisheries. I'll tell you what, Noah, why don't you try a pilot whale study? See how that one turns out. Hey, as my man Grumpy says, don't just watch the reports, make them. When you do so, drop me a line, Jay Hutchinson at thefisherman.com, or you can add your comments at the bottom of this YouTube page, but also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click on that little bell up there, ding-a-ling. You'll get notifications every time there's a new video released on YouTube from your friends at The Fisherman Magazine. Catch them up. I'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com.